Opelika Jane Doe. Child John and Jane Doe's are heartbreaking, and the Opelika Jane Doe is especially so. Her skeletal remains were discovered in a small creek in a trailer park on the 1700 block of Hearst Street in Opelika, Alabama, on January 28, 2012. Her small skull was found directly behind a trailer. She had perished eight months to two years prior, placing her death between 2010 and 2012. Her death has been ruled a homicide, and while the unfairness of her life deeply moved the police trying to find her name, her name has so far eluded them. The poor little girl had marks of abuse on her body showing years and years of mistreatment. It appears she was malnourished, and she was blind in one eye due to an injury suffered at the hands of her abuser or abusers. It was this disfigurement that allowed the police to find what is likely a match in photos that may at some time identify this poor child. The photos were taken at the Opelika Vacation Bible School, and one of the teachers brought them into the police. The enhanced photos can be seen here. The Opelika police have digitally enhanced them, and they are desperately hoping that someone may be able to identify them. Investigators are confident that someone in East Alabama knows who the child is and what happened to her. The Bible school teacher who met her and brought in the enhanced images is confident that they depict a much better likeness to the little girl in life in comparison to the digitally enhanced version that was released originally to the public. Forensic testing revealed that this poor baby Jane Doe suffered long-term physical abuse at the hands of her killer, leaving her left eye blind and scarred until she was ultimately murdered between 2010 and 2012. They believe she was three to seven years old at the time. There is a $20,000 reward for information leading to her name and arrest of her killer. The reward money is from the Alabama Governor's Office as well as the Lee County District Attorney's Office. If you have any idea at all who this child is, please call the number on your screen. The Albuquerque Jane Doe The Albuquerque Jane Doe, like the one before this case, is only one of a handful of cases where there are known photos of the person in life, while the decedent has yet to be identified. 30 years ago in June 1991, this Jane Doe is believed to have taken her own life in a hotel room in Albuquerque. On June 3, 1991, a clerk at the Super 8 Motel in Albuquerque took rent for two people. The man who rented the room gave his name as Eduardo Collin. Along with his information, he provided a fake license number. The clerk could not remember for sure what the man gave his job as, but he believes that he must have been a truck driver. The room was paid in cash at the hotel's truck driver rate, and they were assigned room 233. On June 5, 1991, the room occupants were supposed to check out by 11 a.m., but they did not do so. A security guard was dispatched to the room, finding a Do Not Disturb sign on the outside of the door. He knocked, and no one answered. The room was dead bolted from the inside. Once they removed the screws and were inside, nothing seemed to miss originally. There were bottles of empty alcohol laying throughout the room. However, it was upon checking the bathroom that the Jane Doe could be seen suspended from the shower by a suitcase strap. It was determined that the female was either Caucasian or Hispanic, and between the ages of 25 and 35, she had heroin in her system when she passed away. The clerk never saw the woman entering the room. He saw only the man that he had rented it to. Upon examination, it appeared she was 5 foot 7 and weighed around 140 pounds. Her hair was a reddish blonde color. She was wearing a tank top seen on the screen and white guest jeans. The other personal effects found at the scene were a photo of a woman with a man, a full suitcase, a black suede purse, $500 in cash, and a digital scale with the name George Martinez written on it, as well as cigarettes. The police believe that George Martinez may be the man in the photograph. It took the police several years to track down Eduardo Colon, and he had unfortunately passed away in the meantime. It was then that the family denied that it was Mr. Colon in the photograph, and they said that they were unable to identify the other person in the picture. The strange thing, however, is that police matched the writing on the check-in card to writing known to be written by Mr. Colon. There is no indication anywhere that the clerk was questioned as to whether or not the man in the photograph was the man who checked into the room, so it's possible it was simply a photograph of someone else from a different time that the woman had with her. In March of 2021, authorities released a new clue that had been called in. The woman may have gone by the name Becca and lived in Los Angeles, California for some time. Other than this, it has been 30 years and she has yet to be identified and she likely has family somewhere that has no idea what happened to her. If you have any idea at all who she may be, please contact the number on your screen. The Blunt County Jane Doe On March 25, 2003, surveyors were out working on scouting out land 
in hopes of building a bypass near the Knox Airport. While working in a drainage ditch, they got the surprise of their lives. Rather than the usual rocks and perhaps discarded garbage, they found instead some skeletal remains of a young woman. It wasn't until the following December that a search was conducted. At this time, they found more remains. Cause of death could not be determined, but due to where the body was found, it's unlikely it was natural. Police theorized she could have been disposed of by many of the truck driver serial killers that had so often operated throughout the United States. This means she could be from anywhere and not just Tennessee. They believe she passed away any time from eight months prior to four years, which if correct means that she lost her life between the years of 1999 and 2002. Forensic anthropologists placed her age between the ages of 17 and 25. She was between 5 foot 4 and 5 foot 10 inches tall. She was of African-American descent and she had black hair with synthetic braids. She was found wearing a sleeveless tank that had the saying, I don't need a great deal of love, just a steady supply. A blue fleece hooded jacket was also found there. The police believe she may have worked in the healthcare industry. Officers tried to trace her clothing and while most of it wasn't specific to any area, several items were traced to Illinois, specifically Chicago and Oak Lawn areas. She had protruding front teeth that were described to be almost horizontal and two left incisors that were missing prior to her death. If you have any idea at all who she might be, please call the number on your screen. That's it for today. I want to take a moment to thank everyone who subscribed so far. In order to be able to do anything with the channel, I have to have 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time. I have almost enough watch time now, but I am missing almost half of the subscribers that I need. So if you haven't yet and you could take a moment to subscribe, I would really appreciate it. Take care of yourselves and each other.